Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in the Cube, and in this video, we are going to look at the Power BI Gateway, what it is, and how you can get started with it. And we're starting right now. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right, the Power BI Gateway, formerly known as the On-Premises Data Gateway, this is a way that you can actually connect to data sources that are sitting on premises, as the gateway would indicate. So the idea here is that, all right, I've got a SQL server, maybe it's an Excel file or something that isn't in the cloud per se. So if you're using something like Azure SQL Database or Azure Databricks, or uh, maybe you've got uh, an online SharePoint list or just a web page out there, you don't necessarily need a gateway to do that. The whole point of the gateway is to get to resources that Power BI generally can't connect to. And when it's on-premises, it doesn't know anything about it. But this on-premises data gateway can be used for more than just Power BI. So let's take a quick look at that. This can be used not only with Power BI, but also Azure Analysis Services, Power Apps, Power Automate, and Azure Logic Apps. So all of those go through the, you can use that one single install gateway to be used with all of these services. So it's not just Power BI in itself. So I mentioned that you have to install that Power BI gateway or the on-premises data gateway. It's got to go on a machine somewhere, right? A Windows machine. And so some of the questions that we end up hearing is, all right, well, where does it need to go? And how close do I need to get it to the actual server that I'm trying to connect to or the resource that I'm trying to connect to? And the whole idea here, the whole point of that is to reduce latency, reduce network latency, right? We want to get it, we want to get the gateway as close to the data source as possible. And I kid around with people, but I say like, look, how close can you get it to a SQL server? It's about six inches. That's about how close you can get. A kid, a kid. What you really want to do though, is just from a network perspective, want to get it as close as you can. You could try installing it on your actual physical SQL server itself. Your DBA is probably not going to like you if you're actually trying to connect to a SQL server. The other option is to get a machine that's in the same subnet or same network region as that given item. Let's take a look closer look at this. So when we think about placing the gateway, one thing to consider is where's the Power BI region for your tenant. And in my case, for my tenant, it is West US, so this is sitting on the West Coast. So if I have an actual on-premises server, database server that's sitting in California, then when it tries to go and connect to this resource, the latency should be pretty good. Everything's on the West Coast, so that's about as close as I can get without moving my data center or my database to the cloud. So the other thing to consider here is what if I have my database server sitting in Australia, but my tenant is actually in West US. In this case, you're gonna have really high latency, which is gonna take the time of your refreshes and direct queries and really make them last a little longer. So this is something you really need to pay attention to. Let's take a look at another option here. And this is if my database is actually in the cloud. And so maybe I've got an Azure VM, or I've got a SQL server, maybe it's an Oracle server sitting in that Azure VM, and I spin up another VM for the gateway that's sitting in West US as well. If everything is contained in West US, then you've eliminated the internet from this equation. So you've gotten rid of all that latency. So everything is sitting with inside of the West US data center, should be pretty fast. So again, we don't wanna troubleshoot network latency. If it's slow, I wanna be able to tune my database or my actual data source not have to worry about that network latency. So that's something to keep in mind as we go through this. Okay, so with that being said, we've got to go download and install that gateway. So what I'm going to do is let's switch over to my computer and actually take a look. So I've got a report here. It's connecting to a couple different data sources, a CSV file, a SQL server, Power BI data flow, and a web page. So it's trying to hit all the check boxes in this. So I'm going to go over, I told you not to do this or your DBA won't like you, but for this demo purposes, I'm actually going to install the gateway on my database server. So the way that you can get the download for the gateway is go to Power BI. You'll see this little download area up in the top here, and we can come down and choose data gateway. That will actually download the actual resource onto your local machine. We can hit download gateway. And it will go and download that. So I've already done this on my 
database server. So let's go over there real quick. We'll go ahead and install it. Yep, yeah, went next. All right, so the first choice you're gonna have to make here is that you can choose the default. The recommended is the enterprise mode of the on-premises data gateway. This is the one that can be used with all the services I mentioned before. It supports schedule refresh. It also supports direct query and also live connects to analysis services. So this is something you want to use. Typically, if you're going to go in a production environment, this is the option you're going to use. If you're just testing things and you're kicking the tires or you know something of that nature, then what you are going to use is uh, the personal mode of the gateway itself, right? So I can install this. This is actually set up on my main machine and I can use this for refresh if I need to for testing. It's limited only to Power BI and also you can only do like normal refresh of import models. So you can't do direct query, can't do live connect. So be aware of that. All right, so I'm gonna go with the enterprise one. We're gonna hit next. Bam, all right. You can set the path that you wanna install it to. I'm gonna say accept. All right. Well, yes, yes. All right, once that's done, we have to supply an email address. So this is an account and we're gonna bind this gateway to our tenant. So it can't be used with more than one tenant. You may, if you do have multiple tenants you're working with, you'll have to install different gateways for each. We'll hit sign in. All right, you're gonna have a couple options here. One is to restore or register a new gateway or we can migrate, restore, take over an existing gateway. We'll talk about that in a later video. For now, we're just gonna register a new gateway. All right, we'll give it a name. Another option we have here is the ability to add to an existing gateway cluster. Again, the, it's something to be aware of that a gateway cluster can have multiple physical gateways assigned to it. If we're just creating a new gateway, it will create a new gateway cluster. We'll go into that more detail in a later video. And then we have to give it a recovery key. Please, please, please remember this recovery key. You will thank me later on down the road. All right, configure it, bam. It's ready to go. I can use it with all these other services. Now, the other thing we can do here, uh, this is the on-premise data gateway dialogue you have on the machine where it's installed. A couple of things we can do here. Uh, one is that we can actually change the service account for the gateway itself. So this is really useful if you're trying to get through a proxy and you need to use a domain user account to do that. This is where you can go ahead and change that. There's also some diagnostic items here so we can export the gateway logs uh, and then we can also update some network items as well as configure for custom connectors. So those are all options available to us. All right, cool. So with that, let's head back over to the Power BI service. We need to set up a few more things, but first let's jump over to where the data set is. We'll go into data sets here. I want to set up schedule refresh. Now, when we come into gateway connections, we'll see here that user gateway is off and then I see personal gateway, which is green. And then I also see my Gentoso gateway, which is not configured correctly, right? And so, there are some other items I have to do here. If I expand that a little bit, you'll see the different data sources that we have. And you'll see my CSV and SQL Server. These are the two I need to configure. The other option, this Power BI option, is actually my data flow connector. So it knows how to get to Power BI. That's not a problem. And then my web is just out on the internet and I'm going to use anonymous access for that. So not a big deal. So to configure these, we have to go up to the gear icon and we have to click Manage Gateways. And here we're gonna see our gateway itself. There is additional uh, options here that you can configure. We'll talk about this in a later video. You can assign other administrators to this gateway instead of just yourself. And then we can add a data source in one of two ways. Up top here, we can see Add Data Source. And then also if you look really closely, you can see here that this ellipse there is an ellipse if you hover over it, so you can select that and then say add data source. This is also where you can remove the gateway. Let's go ahead and hit that. And we're gonna add a new data source. Let's call it SQL. Hopefully you give it a more descriptive name. Come down to SQL. So one thing you need to be careful of here is the server name and the database. These have to match what you actually supplied inside of Power BI Desktop. The string exactly, server important. So maybe you put the IP address into Power BI Desktop, but you want to use the regular name here or vice versa, 
these have to be identical. If you use the IP address in Power BI Desktop, you have to use the IP address here on the gateway configuration. That's how it does a matchup between them. The users are also important, but before we do that, let's go ahead and hit add. It says we're good to go. On the users tab, you wanna make sure anyone that's gonna use this data source or the gateways from a publishing perspective is listed here. The consumers of the report do not need to be listed, but the actual users that are publishing and taking advantage that own a data set and setting up schedule refresh, they need to be listed here. All right, cool. So we need to add one more data source here. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll call it CSV. And we'll choose file type. We need to get the path. So one thing to be aware of of this file path is that this is in the context of the gateway itself. So I put in a C colon backslash path here. The gateway, this needs to be on the C drive of the gateway machine if this is how I'm specifying it. So if the so if the file is on my local machine, but the gateway is on a different machine, this path would give me an error. And so you would need to use like a UNC network path as part of that. So like whack, whack, server name, whack, whatever, whatever that path is. So everything there, let's go ahead and add that. It says we're connected, we're good to go. Don't forget the users tab. All right, back over to our workspace. Let's go to the data set. Go back into schedule refresh. We'll say, yep, we're gonna use a gateway. That's on, and now we can see that these items are available. So for file and SQL server, what I'm gonna do is choose those items that I set up, and then we'll hit apply. And now the, for those two data sources, they're gonna use the gateway. For the other data sources, I have to specify those credentials. So for PBI, I'm just gonna come in and hit sign in. Yep, my account. And then for the web server, it's gonna be anonymous, sign in. Good to go. All right, cool. So now we can come back and we can do refresh now, and this will go ahead and set up the refresh. And it looks like it completed. Let's go back into schedule refresh. We'll look at refresh history, and we can see here that it succeeded, or it succeeded in refreshing, which means it actually went out to my SQL server and the CSV file, pulled that through from the gateway, and everything worked as it should, which is amazing. All right. So that's a quick look of how you can use the gateway, what it is and why you would use it. Hopefully this was helpful to you. We're gonna continue this gateway series with a couple more videos to go into more of the details about how certain things work like SSO and, and those types of things. So stay tuned on those. Also, I've got a free PDF that you can download down in the description below that just has some highlights and things. I'm gonna call it a cube sheet that looks at some of the gateway items that you can just have as a thank you. All right, I want to pass this off to you. What do you think? Did this help you get started with the gateway? Did you maybe learn something that you didn't know? Let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome. And we'll see you in the next video.